Hello everyone. So our topic of discussion for today is the verbal learning. So we have observed human beings very closely that how they actually acquire knowledge about various objects, events and their features largely in terms of words. So these words, you know, then further come to be associated with another word. So basically, there are so many methods in terms of verbal learning which help us to understand what exactly this kind of learning takes place. And uh, in verbal learning, of course, uh, psychologists have actually used a variety of uh, materials. So uh, that includes the nonsense uh, syllables. We have the familiar words, the unfamiliar words, you know, uh, there are sentences, uh, you know, uh, there are paragraphs and all of these uh, materials, if we come to see, basically have actually been uh, used by uh, so many psychologists just to make the concept of uh, this form of learning very clear to us. What exactly happens, you know, so let us move on to the methods now. So here we have the methods very clearly depicted. So moving on to the methods, yes, so we have these three very important methods. We have the paired associates learning, then we have the serial learning and then the last is the free recall. So coming to the first method, which is the paired associates learning. Now in this method, what is happening is basically, uh, firstly, we need to understand that this kind of method is very, very helpful uh, in terms of learning a foreign language. So what's happening is, firstly, a paired associates list is prepared, you know. So, uh, of course, there is going to be a list where, of course, on one side of the list, which probably we can assume the left side of the list, we will have all the nonsense syllables, now, of course, uh, these nonsense syllables we come to see are basically those words which literally are not making any sense. That is why the term nonsense syllables. So we, if we consider it towards the left hand side of the list, so they basically act as the stimulus, you know. On the right side of it, we do have the uh, words which of course are the English nouns and they do make sense, you know, and they will act as the response term. So basically, uh, what's happening is that, uh, you know, uh, the learner will actually be shown this list first, which will have both the stimulus response pairs together. You know, and the very first instance when the learner is shown the list, he will also be instructed to remember and recall the response after the presentation of the stimulus term. Now, what's important to understand here is that in this list, yes, we do have, let's say, two columns, you know, we do have these two columns where the, the left hand side, we have those terms which are not making sense. They act as the stimulus terms. And the right hand side, we do have the terms which are very much making sense and they are acting as the response terms. So firstly, they'll be shown, they'll be asked or rather they'll be instructed that you need to remember and whenever we present you with the stimulus term, which is on the left hand side, literally the nonsense syllable you know you need to recall the response term at that time you know so then of course uh, to make sure that uh, learning takes place and they are able to remember then all these learning trials will begin so one by one what's going to happen the stimulus words they will be presented and the participant will try to give the correct response term if suppose on presenting the stimulus term, which is the nonsense syllable, if suppose the learner is not able to recall the response term, then what happens? You know, the response word will be shown to the learner. So see, this is the response term to this particular stimulus, you know. 
and uh, of course then these trials are going to continue until the participant gives all the response terms without making a single error so these uh, trials will continue till then you know so then of course coming to the next form of uh, learning we have the serial learning you know which is the second method uh, used in understanding on studying the um, verbal learning so in serial learning what is happening basically uh, we are going to be uh, of course um, preparing a list you know of some verbal items and uh, this list will obviously consist of uh, nonsense syllables maybe it will also consist of some most familiar or maybe the least familiar words you know so basically it's going to be a list which is going to have these mixed form of terms there will be terms that will make sense there will be terms which we know probably uh, very well and there will be terms which we probably don't know, we've not really heard about, you know. So it will be like a mixed uh, form of words uh, that will be present in this list, you know. And also there can be some interrelated words and all that. You know, now this list, if we, if we come to see, it's just one single list. You know, which will have all these uh, terms one after another presented in one single list, you know. And um, then, of course, the participant is going to be presented uh, with this entire list. And uh, he needs to, of course, be able to produce the items in the same serial order as it is already presented in the list. That is why the name is serial learning. So they basically cannot um, uh, go haywire by the uh, order of the list because there is a serial maintained and they need to maintain that serial order at the time of recalling these terms. So basically uh, what's going to happen in the first trial, um, you know, uh, they are going to of course show the very first term the very first item of the list is going to be shown to the participant and now the first item has been shown to the participant so it will be expected that the participant is able to produce the second term or the second item if the participant is not able to produce the second item you know within the uh, the given uh, time limit then what's going to happen, uh, the experimenter is going to show him the second item. Now this item will become the stimulus, you know, and uh, it will act as the stimulus for the learner. And now the learner has to produce the third item, which will act as the response term, you know. Again, if the uh, learner is not able to present the third item, again, the third item will be shown and the third item will therefore become the stimulus and the fourth item which the learner is expected to produce will act as the response term. So this entire procedure is basically called the serial anticipation method you know and these learning trials will continue to take place until the participant correctly you know is uh, able to correctly produce these items you know in the given serial order so basically how whenever the experimenter is presenting an item or is showing an item that item becomes the stimulus for the learner to give the next item or to produce the next item which will act as the response term. Whatever is coming from the experimenter's end, whatever is being shown from the experimenter's end is acting as the stimulus term. Whatever comes from the learner's end will act as the response term. So one criteria of this particular form of learning is that the learning or uh, uh, the serial learning uh, basically says that, you know, the production or so to say uh, whenever these uh, response terms are produced or uh, whenever they are called out, uh, they need to make sure 
the learner needs to make sure that it is basically taking place in the same serial order. You know, they cannot jumble it. So they cannot uh, maybe uh, speak out the last term uh, in response to the first item. You know, a particular uh, serial order, you know, that's been already presented in the list needs to be maintained. That is why the term serial learning is there. Then, of course, we have the free recall, which is uh, not a very tough method because uh, this is basically uh, talking about that how the participants, they are going to be presented, of course, with a list of terms or words, you know, which they have to read and, of course, speak out. And um, whenever these words are going to be presented to the learner, these words, of course, will be shown at a fixed rate of exposure duration, which means they will see the word, it will be presented to them, it will stay on for some time, they can actually see it, try to remember it, and then the next term will be shown, and then the next term will be shown. All these terms are going to be shown to the learner at a fixed rate of exposure duration which means the duration of each term is going to be the same, you know, and um, very, very fixed uh, time interval is there. So um, afterwards, you know, after that, you know, the, the list has already been presented. The participants, uh, they, are they are basically uh, required to recall the words in any order they can now that they've seen the words you know and all these words were shown at a fixed uh, rate of exposure duration and after showing the entire list and that and that all the words have been shown to them once and for all now these participants can recall these words but uh, it's not necessary that they need to follow a particular serial order but they can recall them in any order which they feel like you know, and um, of course, uh, in the in the given list, there are usually more than 10 words. And um, so basically, um, what's uh, understood or what's basically concluded is that, uh, uh, you know, like, um, whichever words are there usually in the beginning or the words that are present in the end, they are very easy to recall, because that's in a way quite fresh in their mind. But the words that are going to be in the center or in the middle, you know, it's slightly tough to recall those words, you know, because the ones that were shown right in the beginning or right uh, in the end, of course, they're going to be very fresh in their mind and quite easy to recall also. But the ones in the middle, uh, slightly, you know, tough to recall. So this was all about the methods of verbal learning where we started with, of course, the paired associates learning. We talked about the serial learning. And the last is we talked about the free recall. So these are the three important methods of verbal learning. Thank you so much, children.